Welcome back Traveler, my name is Kyle Culver, Gaming is Diabetic Gamer, and in this video we're going to be looking at my absolute favorite feature in No Man's Sky, Photo Mode, on Xbox, and how you can take and save screenshots. Now most of these steps can be applied across all platforms, but with a few differences here and there, but I will be focusing on Xbox's interface. So I'm playing alone here and I want to activate photo mode by pressing down on the D-pad, popping up this bar of icons, then going to the very far right, also using the D-pad arrow, and selecting the icon that looks like a DSLR camera. Everything freezes and we have this wonderful scene to play around with. If you are joining a game with another player, when you hop into photo mode, you'll notice the scene continues to move, but nothing is frozen. Not even your character model. Wherever you activate photo mode is where your bounding sphere is going to be. If you're in your ship and it's moving, it will keep moving while your camera will effectively stick to that position in space. We can move around our character by using the left and right analog sticks and move up and down using the up and down arrows on the D-pad. You can also use the bumpers to rotate the Z-axis of the camera comes really handy in space. One thing you'll notice is you have a limited area to move around in. A wired glowing sphere represents that area. You can change the position of the star by directing the center of your screen to the desired spot and pressing down on your right stick. This is a great way to find the perfect amount of light for your scene, where you want your shadows and whatnot. You can still change the position of the star while playing with other players, but the time of day will continue. So find the light you like and take it quick. I'm going to line up my shot here, which I think is going to be interesting and uh, dynamic. I can make this shot even more interesting by using some of the settings within photo mode. I can bring these up by pressing X on the controller. It's important to remember these settings are for planet side, and when you're in space, the options change, and we'll get to that in a little bit. There are two pages of things you can mess around with, scene and lens. In scene, the very first option is time of day. This changes the position of the star and its natural movement across the sky. Sometimes you get really beautiful different kinds of colors up there too. Or maybe you just miss the star setting on the horizon and you want to go back to that moment. Fog density introduces more of that haze from the background into the middle ground. I think I'm going to add a ton of fog into this particular shot. Cloud level is supposed to change the amount of clouds in the sky, but for whatever reason, after the update, this hasn't affected anything in any scene I've taken photos in. And the last one on this page is a list of filters you can use. Some are extreme, and others add a different kind of look to the atmosphere. I don't normally use filters, but I really like how filmic is turning out. In space, the only options you have in this page are fog density and the filter. The second page, Lens, has options that affect, well, the lens. These are the same for both planetside and space camera settings. The first option is a field of view, which simulates what the zoom would be like for the camera. Except the higher the numbers, the wider the frame. Unlike your typical camera that uses millimeters, with the higher number being the longer, tighter shots. Probably better they called it field of view. The second option is depth of field, and is measured in percentages. This is supposed to simulate what a camera does when less light is introduced to the scene and the iris is wide open. Without getting too technical, it's a great way to separate your foreground with your background, or even isolate your middle ground with your background and foreground blurred out. I'm going to push this all the way up to 100% so that I can achieve that effect. The last option is Vignette. This is an odd one as most of the vignetting effect is on top of the frame, and doesn't give any options to feather or choose how round the vignette is or anything. It can't even be turned off all the way, it's just stopping at 10%, like, just come on. I personally don't like this vignette effect, and if I wanted one, I would rather create it myself after I take the photo. Speaking of which, how do you take the freaking photo? If you hit the Xbox Home button, the menu appears, and next to the menu are instructions of what you can do. At the very top, there's an option to create a screenshot by pressing Y. Pressing Y here takes the photo. You get a notification saying a screenshot has been saved, and gives you additional option to view the image before the notification disappears. Now, if you're like me and you missed the notification, you can get to your screenshots by going into your Xbox menu, 
and moving over to Broadcast and Capture, then selecting Recent Captures. You can choose to view the photo, and while viewing it, you can choose to share it via your activity feed, message club, Twitter, or your OneDrive. You can also choose to upload the screenshot to your OneDrive and deal with it later. You'll get a notification when the upload is complete. I can even save this as my background. Nice. So after you've uploaded to OneDrive, where the heck do you find these photos? You can download the app or you can access your OneDrive via the Microsoft account, the same one you use to access all of your Xbox content. In your browser, go to Microsoft's website and make sure you're logged in. Go to Software, then OneDrive. It will bring you to your default folder view. Go into Pictures, then Xbox Screenshots, and there it is, the photo we uploaded. From here, you can download the photo, share a link of it, or whatever you want. Thanks for watching, I hope this has been helpful for you. Stay safe out there, travelers.